Hey there. Today I'm going to talk about how I made these explosions here in my F4 render. Now the nice thing about these explosions is I didn't have to use a domain or particle systems or fluid simulation to create them. Uh, I just sculpted them and then added volume empties to them to give them the cloud, cloud uh, attributes. Now the nice thing about this is you're not fiddling with all the domain settings, you're not fiddling with all the particle systems, uh, you're not using up your disk space with uh, the cache, and you're not waiting for simulations to run. You pretty much sculpt what you want, um, get the shape you like, throw the volume empty on it, add a shader, put it in your scene, and you're done. So for still images, I think they're a really good tool. Maybe not so much for uh, animations. I mean, they could be animated, but for a still image like this, I think it's uh, a pretty good technique to use. Um, here we have our, our project file, and you can see how they start out. This black glob here is the base mesh for the black smoke, and it has a displacement modifier on it to give it this extra bit of jagginess, but it's really just a bunch of spheres that are tied together. The white smoke is similar, it has a displacement on it, and it also is a bunch of spheres that are stuck together. The um, fireball in the middle here, this, I think actually I started off as a bunch of metaballs that I converted to a mesh and then sculpted and used a lattice to bend it to the shape I wanted. You know, whatever tools you use to get the shape you want aren't important. The idea is you get to a shape and you have some kind of mesh that generally follows the outline of the explosion that you want to have. Um, on these, let me close off the fireball here and we'll just look at one of them. It's pretty much very similar. So turn the displacement back on. The, um, the way the, the volume empties work is you start with a base mesh like this and then you add a volume empty to your scene. And you're not going to see it show up here. It will show up here on your in your um, scene collection as a volume, but you're not going to there's no visible portrayal here. And the volume empty has two modifiers can be added to it. There's a mesh volume and a volume displace. I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm just going to use the one that I already have here. See, I've got the white geometry, which is this, and then I have this white empty, which is the volume empty that goes with it. And you can see I've got a mesh to volume modifier and a volume displace modifier on that empty. And this is where you set the, the object you want to select, or you want to tie it to, so I can select that. And now this empty will use this base mesh as its domain for when it creates all those voxels. The one thing you might want to do here is you might want to change this voxel amount. Uh, the default is pretty low, and you'll get very chunky blocks of clouds. So if you push this number up higher, you'll get finer and finer resolution. So if you're not getting the resolution you want, you know, keep pushing this up a little bit at a time until you get what you like. The volume displace adds some extra turbulence and fuzziness to the edges. It uh, uses a texture in this case. I've, I've created a clouds texture over here and I've used the color ramp to kind of uh, clip some of the high high points and low points to create some holes in it. And then I've assigned that here and I've increased the strength of that to create some extra fuzziness around it. Those are the only two modifiers you have on the uh, volume empties. So if I hide this geometry, geometry there, and it doesn't look like much here, but if we render it, you can see it starts to look like a cloud. All right. And the shader is fairly straightforward here. Um, I have this here as an example. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, generated coordinates, going through a noise texture. The color ramp is used to create some additional definition inside of it. So if I use this rainbow thing here and use the color, you can see how you can use various colors to create some contrast and stuff in here. But I'm just using the black and white one because I just want it desaturated. And you can also take that same kind of color thing and use that to drive the density. And you just want to drive that through a math node with multiply. Um, density seems to be very sensitive, so very often you'll have to cut this way down. Otherwise, you have just you know an opaque solid cloud. All right, so that's the white cloud. The, the black cloud is basically the same thing. Um, you know, it's got the geometry, and then again, it has a displacement modifier on it, and the empty for the black cloud also has the same set. Actually, I can crack that up, make that a little better. Um, so that's the clouds. Not much to them. And when I do the, when I'm working in my scene, I often have the geometry nodes 
turned on here, but render turned off. And then the actual empties will be the opposite. I'll have them not visible in the viewport, but I will have them show up in the render. So when you go to do your final render, you won't see the actual geometry stuff. You'll just see the clouds. Um, talk about the fireball for a second. Fireball started off very similar. It's just a bunch of polygons that are shaped, you know, sculpted. Use a lattice to uh, bend it, twist it the way you want it. The shader is similar, but a little different. Um, it's going through the object noise texture. I use a color ramp to create some fiery colors here. Those go into, unlike the smoke one, I drive a couple different extra things here. We got the color ramp going into the color, which obviously creates the color of the fire. And then um, goes, there's an emissions. Uh, so we use the same colors to drive the emission and the black buddy tint, and then I add a little bit of the emission strength. That'll make it brighter or darker, you know, make it glow more or less. And then you're gonna have to set the density to something, you know, if you wanted less dense. Um, it's probably about as low as it's gonna get. You can see how that changes quite a bit there. All right, so that's the fire, and that's just gonna peek through the smoke. So if we put these together, I'm just going to pause it for a second while it renders. Go to the camera view. Give that a second. All right, so that finished rendering. You can see we've got some dark smoke, some fire, some white smoke. You know, if I was going to do this some more, I'd probably spend some more time sculpting the fire, but I think you get the idea. The other bit of this fireball here is, I don't know if you can see it, there's a there's a shock wave here that you might see if um, you know the explosion went off someplace where there's high humidity. You often see a shock wave like this, this bowl thing, and there's debris flying through it. So quickly talk about that. The let me turn these off. We'll just have that. The shock wave is simply a dome, which is uh, just half a sphere here. You know, I scaled a sphere up, added some subdivisions to it, smooth it out. Added a displacement modifier using the um, you know a cloud texture again to give it some bumpiness, and then assigned a particle system to it. I have this debris collection here, which is just a bunch of junk um, within the collection, you know, bits and pieces of stuff, and then in the shockwave itself, the particle system is set to hair, advanced, you got a certain number of them. They got some rotation on there to randomize the rotation to cause them to kind of spin around. Under render, you know, we've got some variety in the scale, um, some Brownian motion to make things a little more random. Um, and I think the important thing here is, is the source. Uh, you want it to be on volume and random. And the volume will put the particles not just on the outside, but throughout the throughout the thing. So if we go ahead and render this now, and pause it for a second. All right, that finished. So now you can see this faint cloud going around here, and then we've got all of the debris flying around. Um, something I failed to mention was it's rendered as a collection, and then you know, I've selected my debris. All right, um, and as far as the uh, the shader for the shock wave goes. Similar setup to the other things. We're just using a noise texture, color ramp, a multiply value to change the density, and I just left it as white. All right, well, I think that's about it for this. Um, hopefully that was useful. Like I said, um, I think they do a pretty good job, particularly as background images. Uh, you get some blurring in there, motion blur, some fog. I think it looks pretty good. All right, if you liked it, thumbs up. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.